This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 1409, Life Without Cable, Start Saving More Today, by Michelle Schroeder Gardner of makingsenseofsense.com. Welcome to another Sunday edition of Optimal Finance Daily. I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. This is the podcast where I read to you from some of the best blogs in the world, with their permission, of course. And if you like today's episode, you'll probably enjoy our other shows on topics like health, relationships, and personal development. Just search for Optimal Living Daily in your podcast app to find them. But let's jump right into today's post and start optimizing your life. Life Without Cable, Start Saving More Today by Michelle Schroeder Gardner of makingsenseofsense.com. A few months ago, we finally got rid of cable. Since cutting cable out of our lives, we haven't missed it one bit. We're still watching all of our favorite shows, we can still watch the news, and we don't feel like we're missing out on anything at all. There has only been one time when I wish we still had cable, and that was so I could watch the newest season of Walking Dead. That will eventually come out on Netflix though, so I can wait for that, no problem at all. According to NPD Group, a market research company, the average monthly cable bill in 2015 is expected to be $123. By the year 2020, the average cable bill is expected to be around $200 a month. That's a lot of money. That's $1,476 for 2015 alone. By 2020, the average annual cable bill would then be $2,400. I know of many people who spend much more than this as well, such as someone who recently told me that they spend over $300 a month on their cable bill. While that may seem crazy to you, I've heard of many people who pay this much money and sometimes even more for cable. By learning how to cut cable, you could save thousands of dollars over your lifetime. That money could be better spent on retirement, traveling, family, and more. Following are different areas that some of you have wondered about when it comes to cutting cable. Continue listening to learn how to cut cable today. Cutting cable is easy with a digital antenna. When you think about antennas, you probably think about the classic rabbit ears that are big and ugly. You probably also think about how a picture is never perfect and how channels can get blurry and almost completely fade away. Well, these days, antennas are no longer like that, and this makes cutting cable much easier. They're sleek looking and allow you to watch your favorite TV shows with no problem at all. There's no monthly cost, just a small upfront cost to buy the antenna. You just pay for the antenna once and you can watch local channels as much as you want. We recently bought an antenna and it's been working well for us. It's an indoor one that sits behind our TV. There's no ugliness that goes along with it and you can't even see it. The antenna gives us around 14 channels and they're all of great quality. The antenna was around $60 and it will allow us to save hundreds of dollars a year for years to come, so it was a great deal. If you get an antenna, I've heard of others getting many more channels, sometimes even 50 or 60. If you're interested in learning how to cut cable and looking for alternatives to cable, I highly recommend getting an antenna. We spend $8.99 a month on Netflix. The only thing we spend money on monthly after cutting cable is Netflix. I can watch everything I want because of Netflix, and it's nice because I don't have to watch commercials or wait to see what happens after a cliffhanger. The only bad thing about this is we're watching a little too much Netflix. We've watched whole series of shows already, but luckily we're getting a little better with controlling ourselves. There are also many other options when it comes to still being able to watch your favorite TV shows after cutting cable. You could get Hulu Plus, Amazon Prime, pay for the episodes you wanna watch individually, and more. There are tons of options out there. We don't watch sports, so cutting cable was an easy decision. Many people have asked, oh, but what are you doing so that you can watch sports? Figuring out how to cut cable and whether it would work for us is easy since we don't watch any sports on TV. It really is that simple. How much money are we saving? We aren't saving a ton of money. I'll be honest and say that. However, it was money we were just wasting though. And it was very rare whenever we did watch a TV show that wasn't on a local channel or on Netflix. This is the main reason why we decided to get rid of cable, as it was useless and just another bill that we didn't need in life. We were saving around $41 each month and around $492 each year after you subtract Netflix expenses. We are also saving time. I used to have to talk to our cable company once every six months so that I could negotiate our cable bill down. 
our cable companies seem to have a 10 or $20 increase a few times a year. And that's just insane. If we would have never negotiated, I'm sure our monthly cable bill would have been in the $100 or $200 range. You just listened to the post titled Life Without Cable, Start Saving More Today by Michelle Schroeder Gardner of makingsenseofsense.com. I'm gonna share something with you that might come off a bit obnoxious. I've never had cable my whole adult life. I also, wait for it, have never owned a TV until a couple of months ago. Mind you, I've had some roommates who have had TVs, so it's not like I've never lived with one. And I do have Netflix and Amazon Prime for when I really wanna watch something, but I'm already regretting buying that TV. It was cheap, so it's not about the money, and I don't think the cost of cable is all that terrible. Michelle said it herself, she's saving less than $500 each year. I think the biggest cost to spending time parked in front of a TV is opportunity cost. When we're spending too much time in front of the TV, we're not exercising or meditating or reading or working on our side hustles or doing other things that are really good for us. It's a very passive form of entertainment and relaxation, and I do enjoy it from time to time, but I've noticed that when I watch too much TV, it makes me feel like my brain is melting. So while this is a podcast about money, I'd say the cost of this activity is not the issue here. Time is much more valuable than money because it's a resource that doesn't replenish. You can never get more time. So do you really want to spend it watching TV? And that's another weekend edition of Optimal Finance Daily in the Books. Thanks so much for your support and for listening every day, of course. Have a great rest of your weekend if you're listening in real time. And I'll be back tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.